Hello, my name is Kendra Winchester. Welcome back to my channel. And today I'm going to be doing my May wrap up. Now, May was a very busy week and I wasn't always in the right headspace for books. And maybe I'll do a video at some point about reading the right book at the wrong time. But that definitely happened to me this month for sure with a few of these books. Uh, so I don't have a ton to say about them. So I'm just going to go through them and tell you a little bit about my impression of them and how who I would recommend them to, I should say, and just different things. All right. You ready? So a five star book for me, I would recommend to everyone is Alice Munro's Too Much Happiness. This is her short, one of her many short story collections. She is one of the best short story writers in English language history. And I don't say that lightly. She is fabulous. Even a mediocre Alice Munro story is better than the majority of people's stories. She's just perfection everything she does. This particular collection had themes of chronic illness and bodily difference, which was very interesting because uh, that's something that I'm very interested in reading about, being someone with a disability. So I love this. I buddy read it with Sean Mooney over at the Book Maniac. Uh, so reading a Canadian author with a Canadian, I think worked out really well. So a book that is so perfect, I, I don't really have much to say about it, is Spring by Ali Smith. I definitely feel I wasn't in the right headspace for this book, but even in it, I could tell that this book was incredibly beautifully written. I love Ellie Smith. That being said, at this point, she's just competing with herself, and my favorites are still The Accidental and How to Be Both. Uh, of this seasonal quartet, I would say Autumn is my favorite, followed by Spring, then Winter. This one, it really follows, I guess, uh, a lot of people moving around, uh, and there's a lot of movement. Uh, it starts with Shakespeare, per usual, and there's a lot going on in this book, and it's very relevant to today's politics. Um, I will link Jen Campbell's review. I forget what website it's from. I'll put it down in the show notes. So you can go check it out. Um, she did a gorgeous review of this, and I feel like breaks it down very well. Uh, so if you want more details about Spring, go check it out. But uh, it is a beautiful, it is a beautiful book. Um, I actually listened to it per usual, and I love Ali Smith on audio. This is my last book of Jasmine Ward's that I have yet to, had yet to read. This is Where the Line Bleeds by, obviously, Jasmine Ward, and it's a reissue by Scribner. I read this for the podcast this month. We're talking about working class stories. This is Ward's debut, and it's about Joshua and Kristoff. They are twin uh, black boys living in the Mississippi Delta near New Orleans, and... Uh, one gets a job after graduation, one doesn't, and we follow their trajectories and the choices that they make. Uh, this is a debut novel, right? I feel like this novel, Desmond Ward was learning the rules so that she could break them in her later novels. It's still a very uh, good read, but uh, I think having read all of Ward's other work to this, you know, after this, uh, you can see where she's going. Uh, but I still think it's worth reading, uh, and it's a better novel, I guess, than most people would ever write, because being Desmond Ward, but it is a beautiful book, and you can also see some of the her love of classics. There's Castor and Pollock's twins. I mean, the brothers are twins. There's just a lot of gorgeous writing in this book, but not quite to the level that I think she reaches in Salvage the Bones. So as someone who loves Ward, I think this is a great book to read, and we're going to be talking about it on the podcast, so I'm just going to put this down. We have a whole discussion episode about it that'll go up in a couple weeks, so enjoy. <laughs> so I read some pretty intense books this month, and I needed a break, honestly, a mind break, and so I read uh, The Side of Per Moonstone by Praveen, uh, by Praveen Mystery. No, it's about Praveen Mystery. The author is Sujata Massey. It's out from Soho Crime. This is the sequel to The Wid Widows of Malabar Hill. Um, everything that I struggled with in Widows of Malabar Hill, like I love the book, but I, it's kind of slow and clunky in its structure and plot. Everything about that she kind of fixes and just becomes a better novelist with this book. Uh, it's more streamlined. There's only one like timeline. You're following it all the way through and she maintains that throughout the book. The mystery is just delightful. But what I really like about Sajjada Massey's writing is that she also is commenting on the culture of colonialism during this time period in 1920s India, but she's also commenting on Indian culture and the problems with that it had and how that interacts with colonialism 
lots of cultural commentary and also she has someone in here who uh, is an amputee and so there's a lot of the complications of one's life after you lose a limb and being having that bodily difference and what that looks like and, and even Praveen's own preconceived notions about other religions and different things. I, I just feel like it's very intricately drawn throughout the book. All of the things. I was just loved it. I flew through it in less than 24 hours. I want to reread all of her books so far, which is only two. There's only two in the Purveen Mystery series. It makes me very sad and I hope that Shujata Massey writes many, many more. I feel like some books are just very difficult to read because of the topics in them and they're brilliant books but they can be a lot to read uh, and so in many ways this book heavy is very heavy and I think that's part of the title and how it works with the story. Uh, this is by Casey Lehman and it, the subtitle is An American Memoir and it's a memoir about his life and how a lot about how his weight uh, whether overeating or having anorexia like affects his life and he goes back and forth between those two. So he writes a, like this book to his mom in second person and the entire book is about his relationship with his mother and how that is reflected in his uh, harmful behaviors and uh, this book is gorgeous, very slim, but very well done, but it is very difficult to read. Like emotionally, I, I had to read it in chunks just to, so I would overwhelm myself because this book is heavy. He's telling his story and I think there there's a, a lot of importance to that. But yeah, so just prepare yourself. I listened to the audiobook and he reads it and it's, it's beautiful. Um, it's just very difficult and I, I find this kind of book difficult to read because you kind of first have to read it once to just to get the story and then read it again to understand it a little more and I think this book definitely deserves rereading. So I'm going to put that in my reread pile and, and to check it out again and then maybe I'll have more to say about it after I do but I would upon first reading recommend reading this book if you really enjoy memoir, um, if you enjoyed Roxane Gay's Hunger, uh, there's a lot of similar themes but for an african-american man as opposed to um roxane gay's story uh, it's just it's so good so a book i feel like i definitely read at the wrong time is the other americans by Leila lalami and this is out from pantheon and this book is good but considering that you know, I read the Moore's account. It's a brilliant novel. I feel like she's writing up here with like, you know, Zadie Smith and is just at a higher degree of difficulty. And so if anyone else had written this book, I'd be like, oh yeah, that's a good book. You know, that's, you know, it's, it's a good book, but she's not an average literary fiction writer. She's a great literary fiction writer and I expected greatness and I don't feel like I got that. I just got like a good novel. Uh, and I guess I just had really high expectations, which part of that is not fair to the author but I love the Moore's account so much and it was just so brilliant and the way that she wrote it. I uh, went into this book which is a contemporary novel versus the historical fiction of the Moore's account. It was also a multi-perspective novel instead of singular a singular perspective and there are a lot of different perspectives and voices in this book and for me it didn't feel like a harmony. It didn't feel like they supported each other. It felt like a clash. Uh, of voices and they just didn't all work together and the ending I didn't feel like it stuck. So while this is a good book I think that those things keep it from being a great book. I would still recommend reading this book. I feel like I'm in the minority opinion. Most people love this book so I am, it's getting great reviews so again it possibly just read at the wrong time but uh, it is gorgeous and Leila Lalami is a very, very talented writer and I will be reading her next book. I just feel like I just didn't get along with this one in particular. So the last book I'm going to be talking about is from Hanover Square Press and this is Mallory O'Mara's The Lady from the Black Lagoon, Hollywood Monsters and the Lost Legacy of Millicent Patrick. This is half memoir, half biography. So we have Mally Romero's memoir of her life working in film out in Hollywood and different things and her life and then we alternate between that and Millicent Patrick's life. And part of that is useful because, you know, America can then make, you know, comments on a woman in the film industry from, you know, a previous generation. At the same time, I feel like when you have something like that, it's really difficult to feature them equally. Typically one has to be subservient to the other for it to work 
completely. Um, it can be written this way, I, I, but I'm not sure that for this particular story that it worked. And I found Millicent Patrick's story very interesting, and I found Mally Romero's story very interesting, but I'm not sure that they worked together. I don't feel like they were interwoven as much as they could have been. Uh, so while I would recommend this book, and it is a very interesting story and a story that needs to be told, I'll be interested to see where Mallory Romero goes next now that she has you know, this book under her belt, and she has learned, I'm sure, a lot from writing this book. It is a very important discussion about, you know, sexism in Hollywood and all of these different things, and also Millicent Patrick was a woman in Hollywood who uh, fought for her place, and yeah, she's a very interesting life story. So, um, yeah, and also this cover, I mean, look at that. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. So those are the books that I read in May. Uh, I actually read most of these books in the first half of May. In the second half of May, we prepped for Book Expo, so very little reading got done, but I'm very excited to be back and to be reading more. Thank you so much for watching, and of course, per usual, all of these will be linked on the show notes. Uh, you can go uh, see the links for them. Uh, anything I mentioned will be down there, and also uh, subscribe if you like this video, and yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.